Hello, I'm Dougald Morrow. And I'm Michael Ventnor. Welcome to the third episode of Cloud Cafe. We're going to show you how to develop apps with Forge. Both Dougald and myself are developer advocates focused on Forge. We've each built a number of Forge apps and we're confident we can get you up and running quickly. But before we go too far, let's take a look at the agenda for this episode. We're going to start by outlining the key features of Forge and why you would choose it to develop apps. We'll then walk you through the process of creating an app. We are going to assume this is the first time you've built with Forge, but that you're not a complete novice to app development. Once we have the app created, we'll then explain the development loop so you can make improvements to your app iteratively and efficiently. We'll be sharing code throughout this episode but you don't need to pause to copy the code because we've open sourced it and we'll share a link at the end. Forge's architecture is really interesting. It's centered around the FAS model or functions as a service. You've probably seen this in other places such as AWS Lambdas and Google Cloud Functions. And in fact, Michael went over the benefits of this model during Atlassian's 2020 Remote Summit. So check it out for more details. The cloud functions are typically used for backend processing, but Forge user interfaces are also generated from functions. The function-centric nature of Forge allows for a very simple deployment model, whereby Forge completely manages the hosting and execution of apps. This means that you can create, deploy, and install your apps with amazing ease. And once you've deployed your app, there's very little you have to do to maintain it because Atlassian takes care of the hosting and execution of Forge apps. Building apps on the FAS model really is a game changer. This model also leads to users trusting your app more. That's because Forge functions run within a secure sandbox that controls exactly what an app can and can't do. In fact, Dougal provided a very early vision of the security and trust aspects of Forge at Atlas Camp in 2019, when Forge was first announced. For example, Forge apps do not need to generate tokens or manage secrets in order to call Jira and Confluence REST APIs. The Forge framework takes care of the credentials behind the scenes. Forge requires you to follow a new paradigm when writing your app, but in return, you offload a lot of the complexity to Atlassian, such as compliance, uptime, and scalability. In addition to security and trust, Forge user interfaces can be rendered natively on any client. This is because the user interface is generated by the app in a function, sent to the client in an intermediate format, and then rendered by the client side of the Forge framework. Each different type of client, such as browser, iOS, and Android, can have a custom rendering engine tailored to the unique characteristics of that client. So this is awesome since it future-proofs your apps because Forge ensures your app will be rendered seamlessly regardless of any changes made to Jira, Confluence, or any other products that Forge supports. So there are many reasons why you should build your apps with Forge, but now we'd like to show you how. Let's take a look. Okay, now that we've gone through the key features of Forge, no doubt you want to try building a Forge app yourself. So let's build one right now. Last episode, we built a Confluence macro in Atlassian Connect. This macro displayed a world map and highlighted countries of your choice. Let's see how we would build that same app, but on the Forge platform instead. As of this recording, Forge is in beta, but you can register your interest by going to atlassian.com slash forge. Provide us with your details, including the email address associated with your Atlassian account, and you will soon be granted access to this exciting new platform. Once you've been notified that you are onboarded, you must then make sure to have two things installed, Node and Docker. You can download Node from nodejs.org and Docker from docker.com. Next, you must globally install the Forge command line tools by running npm install g at forge slash cli. The Forge CLI needs to be authenticated with your Atlassian account, but before we can do that, we need to generate an API token associated with your account. Go to id.atlassian.com 
slash manage dash profile slash security slash API dash tokens. Here, you can generate revocable tokens to give tools access to your Atlassian account without having to disclose your actual password. Let's create one for Forge by clicking the Create API Token button. Label your token and click Create. Now go back to your terminal and run Forge Login. Provide the email address associated with your Atlassian account and the token you just generated. Once that's done, you're ready to create your first Forge app. To create a new app, enter Forge Create and follow the prompts. Like a number of Forge CLI commands, this command is interactive. Let's choose the name Forge Countries Macro. Forge then asks us to select from a list of project templates. Let's select the template Confluence Macro TypeScript. We'll now change into the directory of the project and run npm install to fetch the dependencies. We'll now deploy the app by running forge deploy. Forge bundles the app code and deploys it on Atlassian's infrastructure so that it is ready to run when needed. Now that the app has been deployed, we can install it by running forge install. Forge asks you to select the product and tenant that you're installing the app in. If you don't yet have a Jira or Confluence tenant for testing your Forge apps in, there's a link at the end of this episode showing where you can create tenants. Now that the app has been installed, we can start using it. Here you can see a Confluence page in which we'll insert the app's macro. When we save and view the page, the app's macro function runs and displays Hello World. you'll inevitably introduce a bug in your app and you'll need to find the root cause. One way you can do that is by adding log statements through the standard console.log call. Let's go back to the function that renders our hello world text. We're going to add a log statement like so. Let's save and deploy our app. And when it's done, we'll return to our Confluence page and invoke our app by refreshing the page. You can see the logs of the deployed app by running forge logs. And there it is. Thanks, Michael. Yes, Forge allows invocations of your app to be tunneled to your development machine. This means you can run, change, and test your app without the relatively slow step of deploying it. Let's take a look. To start tunneling, run the forge tunnel command. Forge uses a Docker image to ensure the runtime executes in a consistent environment. Once you see the message app code reloaded, the next action that causes your app to be invoked will execute on your development machine. Forge will only ever attempt to invoke one tunneled app function at a time. So let's reload the Confluence page that we've added our app's macro to. You can see the output of the log statement in the terminal window running the Forge tunnel. Now let's add another log statement. Note that Forge automatically rebuilds the app after detecting any changes to the code. Now we'll reload the page and we'll see the extra log statement is called. So Forge's tunneling feature allows us to make changes and test them without having to redeploy. Or in other words, the development loop is nice and fast. However, if you come across a really troublesome issue, you can use Forge's debugging tools to get to the bottom of it. First, you must relaunch the Forge tunnel but this time with the debug flag, like so. Forge tunnel dash dash debug. When the tunnel launches, the terminal will display a URL to paste in Google Chrome. This leads to Chrome DevTools, already linked with the Forge tunnel. Let's go back to our code 
and create a breakpoint by adding a debugger statement into our app. Let's put it here in the function that renders our macro. Let's save and trigger our render function by reloading the page. When we do, we see the debugger statement is caught by the DevTools, and we can use many of the familiar features of these DevTools to diagnose our issue. Now let's look at how we can extend our app to add more functionality. We mentioned before that Forge uses an intermediate format to create UI. This is called Forge UI and allows you to easily add elements that match the look and feel of the surrounding platform and product. Some of the extension points you can add in Forge UI include Jira issue glances, Jira issue panels, additional menu items, and of course, confluence macros like the one we're developing now. Let's begin with a confluence macro that displays a world map. The source code for this Forge app is available as a Bitbucket repository at go.atlassian.com slash forge countries macro src. We're going to extend this macro by adding a configuration screen. This will allow the user to select which country on the map to highlight. To create a configuration pop-up for your macro, we need to use the config form component from Forge UI. Anything inside this component will be displayed in the configuration pop-up. Let's also import select and option components to create a drop-down for selecting the country to highlight. Now, we must create a component just like the one here called app. It will return a config form element that gets rendered in our configuration pop-up. Let's also add our drop-down. Thirdly, let's connect our config form to our macro. The macro component down here has an optional property called config. Just like the app property, you specify a Forge UI element to render. So let's instantiate our config component that we just created. If you've used React with JSX, this might look very familiar to you. Forge UI components can be written and used almost exactly like React components. But please note, Forge UI components are not React components and you can't use React inside your Forge app. Our final step is getting our macro to read the user's configuration. We do this by calling useConfig. This function returns the current configuration set by the user as a plain JavaScript object. Because we named our dropdown component selected country using the name property, we access the value of that dropdown by reading config dot selected country. So now our macro is configurable. Let's redeploy our app. Okay, now we'll go back to our Confluence page, click Edit, and in our Forge app, we now see the configuration icon. Clicking it, opens up the config form we just wrote inside a modal dialog. Let's select a country, click Save, and you can see that it is now highlighted. Now you've seen how easy it is to add features and UI to your Forge app. You can even have your apps work across multiple Atlassian products at once. Before we move on, I want to demonstrate how easy it is to invoke APIs with Forge. I'm going to paste some additional code into our app. This code calls the Confluence REST API to add a label containing the name of the selected country. The payload of this post request is here, but the interesting aspect about this code is what you don't see. You don't need to provide any credentials because Forge automatically adds them for you. This method here tells Forge to use the credential of the person interacting with the app's user interface. You also don't see a base URL in the API we are calling because Forge determines that from the context in which it is running. Context information is also retrievable by the app. In this case, 
the context information is being used to determine the ID of the page we need to add the label to. Now when the app next runs, it labels the page with the name of the highlighted country. So invoking product APIs is really easy with Forge. So let's recap on what we've covered in this episode. Firstly, it should be clear that Forge apps require much less setup and maintenance because Atlassian is hosting them. You can create and deploy Forge apps in seconds with the Forge CLI tool. We demonstrated how the tunneling feature enables you to make changes and test them without deploying. You can also use log statements to figure out what's going on, and you can even debug your apps using Visual Studio Code. We enhanced the app to make a REST API call to Confluence. We showed how Forge provides context information for making API calls and takes care of adding the appropriate security tokens. We call this managed auth. And lastly, we demonstrated the ease with which Forge user interfaces can be built in only a few lines of code similar to ReactJS. Before we end, you may like to check out the code we used to demonstrate the features in this episode. If so, you should see the URL of the Bitbucket repository on the screen now. You can create your own Jira and Confluence tenants for testing your Forge apps at this URL. And of course, you can find the Forge documentation alongside our other developer documentation at this URL. So that's all for now. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. We're looking forward to seeing all your Forge apps.